How to Have Emotions When Acting Part 1. So we already all realize that in order to be an actor, you're going to have to have emotions. You can't be a walking robot on the screen trying to go and pretend that you have emotions because we actually got to see it coming from you. Unless we're going to be watching Transformers and it's Optimus Prime on the screen, hey, I'll watch that robot all day long. Otherwise, when we see people, we actually want to have a human connection, want to have feelings coming out. This is what we love to see in the theaters. So here's what we're going to do. The first part of this video is going to be telling you how you can go and have emotions. How after this video you can implement it for yourself so when you do your scenes, you do your monologues, you do anything with acting, you're going to be able to have emotions. Then the second part of this video, which is going to be just a small bit but I want to include it in here, is the downfalls that actors will sometimes have when they think, okay, this is what I have to do, but they don't realize how to fully implement it into their work because I want you to understand all of this fully. So it's going to be very easy, but extremely effective for all of you, which to me is the most important thing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So acting is all about playing and working on your instincts. The last thing at all that you want to be as an actor is rigid. You don't want to be rigid in any form of your life for the most part. We want to be loose. We want to be fluid. We want to work off of our instincts and be natural. If we think about it from other fields, if you think about it from boxing, you can't be in the ring and be stiff like this. If you're stiff, you're going to get knocked out very quick. You have to be loose and you also have to work on your instincts. Meaning when that punch is coming at you, you can't spend time to calculate this punch as it's on the way to you. You have to react, you have to dodge, you have to move, you have to counter punch. It's all instinctive. If we think about it from a baseball player, a baseball player who's there ready to hit the ball when the ball's coming at a million miles an hour, what you have to do is you have to use your instincts and they've done tests on this before that have proved it's the instincts that are kicking in to know where to swing, when to swing, how to swing in order to hit that ball. So we know that instincts are very important with other fields in our life. So you also have to realize that it's just as important when it comes to your acting. So now the question that you're gonna ask is okay great how do I go and use my instincts I need to know this tell me this well here's the thing the problem that's holding you back from this and not just you but also a lot of actors is that you are making your characters far too broad and this is hindering you so I want to give you two examples I had two different actors come to me with two different completely different scenes that they were working on so one actor had a scene and he told me oh in this scene I'm trying to go and win this girl over Another actor came to me and said, in this scene, I'm trying to get all these people to listen to me. And I said, okay, that's great, but we need to see details in there. If you're just telling me, hey, you got to go and win this girl over, well, how are you going to do that? Are you doing it by flirting with her? Are you doing that by guilting her to try and go out with you? Are you doing that by pleasing her? How are you actively doing it? Because all three of those things are all approaches that you can take. Or trying to get people to listen to you. How are you trying to get them to listen to you? Are you trying to inspire them? Are you trying to get their blood boiling and they're enraged so they're forced to listen to you? Are you trying to go and sympathize with them? How are you trying to do it? So many different things you can do. You can do some of those, you can do all of those, you can do just one of those to try and have something effective to work on in the scene. And ultimately, this is what we call tactics. Now, if you've done any acting classes before, you've probably heard this word thrown around a few times. Hey, what's your tactic? What's the tactic here? You need a tactic, blah, 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 blah. It's all thrown around. The thing is that I find most actors don't completely understand what tactics actually means or how to use it and implement it for themselves. But the thing is, a lot of times when you're in an acting class, especially in a class with a lot of different people, it's sometimes hard to get all the details in, or sometimes the instructors may just not be great instructors. They may have an approach that works for them, but they can't articulate it enough to the other actors, and that's where it can become tricky. So I really want you to understand what it means to go and have tactics for yourself. And in order to do that, you have to know how to get these tactics. The way to get them is to use action verbs. Again, this is another acting term that you might have heard before, but it's really important to understand this concept of action verbs. So what action verbs do is they actively give you something to play with, which then allows you to go and use your instincts, which then naturally allows feeling and emotions to come out. That's the key word. It naturally comes out from the instincts, because if we remember, instincts naturally kick in. Once your instincts are working as an actor, the emotions will always follow. So one more time, I'm going to repeat it. It's going to go from play to instinct, then to emotions. So really quickly here, let's go through some of these action verbs so you can see them, and I want you to actively really listen to them so you fully understand them. So let's put them on the screen here and I'll read some of them to you. So some of them here are to accuse, to amuse, to belittle, to challenge, to celebrate, to charm, to confess, to congratulate, to apologize, to entice, to flirt, to gloat, to ignore, to rejoice, to ridicule, to surrender, to threaten, and to worship. 
And the great thing about these action verbs is that they resonate with us. They give us a feeling on the inside. I know I had a feeling. I'm sure all of you had a feeling. And the great thing about this is, is these are just words. But by hearing these words, they're all giving you a different feeling inside where you're like, oh, I know what it is to apologize. I know what it is to confess. I know what it is to flirt, to charm, to threaten, because we've all lived a human life. And if you lived a human life, you've had so many different experiences for yourself that we know what it is to feel these things. So when you hear these words, you know what the feeling is. And by knowing that we have this feeling on the inside, it's the proof that shows when our instincts start to kick in, then the emotions naturally follow. So now all of you are going, great, awesome. Now I'm gonna go and use this and just implement this into all of my work. Great, I think you should. Let me just tell you where actors will go wrong when they're trying to implement this, when they implement it in the wrong way. So the wrong thing to do is to think that all of these action verbs are weighted the same way. They are not. Depending on the character you are playing, you need to give certain action verbs more weight or maybe completely eliminate some of these action verbs. So for example, if you're playing a boy next door character or you're trying to play a bad boy character, the way that both of these characters try to win over a girl is going to be completely different between them. If we think about the character of Peter Kavinsky from To All the Boys I've Loved Before, or we think of Damon Salvatore from The Vampire Diaries, well for Peter Kavinsky, he's more of the boy next door type of character. He can go and he's trying to win a girl over, he can go and flirt with her. But say the Damon Salvatore character, he may try to go and challenge her. He may try to go and ignore her because ignoring is also a way to try and win a girl over. Or he may try to go and entice her. There's different approaches that will be done, but most likely you're going to find a big difference between these two characters and the way that they do it. So you have to understand, depending on the character that you're playing, you're going to have different action verbs. Now, you're going to ask me the question saying, wait a minute, how do I know though which action verbs to use for the bad boy or the nice boy or the bad girl or the nice girl? Well, the way that you do that is simply by going and watching other great actors who have portrayed all these bad boy characters, nice boy characters, bad girl characters, nice girl characters. You go through them and you can see what are the similarities that they all have. Now naturally, because you've probably seen a lot of movies and TV shows, you naturally already know some of these things. You can go through this list of action verbs and probably actively find a lot of things that you're like, oh yeah, definitely nice boy character here, definitely bad boy character here, naturally. But the more that you have an active eye, the more things that you're gonna find on the nuances of, oh yeah, I can incorporate this quality or this quality from a character. Character. And that's going to allow the active emotions, which should be happening for each character, to come out. But you want to have the right emotion come out when you're portraying these characters. Otherwise, if you have the wrong emotion coming out, it'll just look odd when you're watching it back. So now a quick recap for all of you on this. Acting is all about playing to then lead to your instincts, which then will lead to your emotions. Now, in order to get this play, you have to have tools for yourself. This here, this action verbs, this is a very, very extremely helpful tool for all of you. Now, as an actor, you could go and find a million different tools that people can always tell you about, but ultimately what you need is just a small handful of these tools that'll be ultimately the most helpful for all of you. So congratulations to everybody who stuck through this video. Part two will be coming out very soon. Make sure you subscribe so you're up to date with everything, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.